This episode is sponsored by Connect to End COVID-19. Welcome to Social Work Talks. My name is Greg Wright, and we are starting a series where we are talking to social workers from other nations. Our first is Juju Min Tu, who is from the nation of Myanmar in South Asia. It's also known as Burma. Welcome to Social Work Talks, Juju. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me. So um, how did you first decide to become a a social worker, and are there a lot of social workers growing up in Burma? Um, There were not a lot of social workers growing up in Burma, but the philosophy of social work and the social justice that I have believed in, even before I understand the words uh, of social justice and the value and the responsibilities of it, especially my journey coming from Burma, uh, where the society have a lot of and justice going on uh, with the coup and, um, you know, without rules of law, how life has been and justice for a lot of Burmese people inside the country. So I have seen a lot of ingest in my community. So that have been my uh, the main force for me to um, become a social worker. But also, um, yeah, when I work at Planned Parenthood, um, in 2014, around 14, and uh, that's when I see a lot of injustice for women as well. Yes. Yeah, so um, I was wondering if you could describe what some of those injustices were that you saw, Juju. Um, so both in Burma and U.S., yeah. So um, growing up in Burma, you know, I see uh, discrimination against different ethnic and uh, I'm Burmese. I'm like... Uh, white people in the U.S. with the privilege, a lot of privilege. I got a lot of benefit out of the system, but I was not aware of my privilege. Um, but when I came to the U.S., I am a minority here. So my role reversed, my privilege reversed, and I become aware of what the privilege and the uh, responsibilities of it. And then especially being a woman in the U.S., um, you know, now we're going through this, movement of uh, reproductive rights. And when I was working for Planned Parenthood, I see the injustice for brown and minority community, how we have it underserved for their uh, health care. And um, I see the um, income in, uh, inequality that serve women, black women, brown women, not to have the access to a birth control or having a right on our own body. So I see a lot of injustice for women back home in Burma as well as in the U.S. Gotcha. So you made um, a decision really to move um, thousands and thousands of miles in order to get an education in social work. Um, could you like tell us more about that journey like how did you like find out about educational opportunities here and um which school of social work did you decide to attend here yeah so um i actually came to the u.s for my undergrad degree but uh for the social work i went to washington university in st louis the brown school of social work so uh before that when i get into uh social work i was going to uh I was planning to go to law school. So I, in my undergrad, I studied political science and international study because my dream was to return to Burma and change the constitution um, that served and justice to a lot of Burmese communities. Uh, but then I realized that, you know, the people who wrote the law are um, writing these unjust law because they're not uh, aware some of them are aware of what they are writing, but also a lot of the law that when you look at in every society is described the manifestation of disorder. When you see these disorder, when you look at it underneath, there's a lot of mental illnesses that create and just society. So I realized that in social work, we can change a lot of laws as well as individually uh, mental health and well-being. So instead of changing the law, I wanted to uh, connect with individual level to find peace within each other. So that's when I starting to uh, 
uh, heal myself and ask the, uh, also people around me. So it's like a ripple effect. If I'm constantly seeking for inner peace and healing myself, um, and as well as people around that, the peaceful effect will be a ripple effect to people around me, my community, my family, my countries. When I say countries now, it's the U.S. environment both. So that's why I am work, more like working on uh, peace building within myself and my communities. Yes. So um, you have already mentioned that you worked at Planned Parenthood here, but what other, what other types of like social work have you done here in the United States? Uh, so right now I am at uh, Queen's Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii. So I'm a medical social worker. Um, and so when you are in the medical social work setting, especially I work in the cardiac ICU, I see a lot of like substance use, uh, elderly, uh, geriatric care, um, and uh, also a lot of psych patients. And uh, right after I graduated from social work school, I was in a psych hospital, so inpatient psych, and also for my Burmese community, it's more like community social work leaderships. Um, also, you know, connecting community, community building. So I first started as like, oh, I just want to be a clinical social worker. But then I see that I can utilize my social work skill in uh, every different levels so um basically medical social work community work leadership everywhere <laughs> yes yeah i see so you live in um hawaii is is there a large um community there from burma juju um it's a small type community yeah we have about maybe two three hundred burmese people in seven islands uh burma had um years of military rule and they also had um a coup recently so i'm guessing that there's a big need for social work there and i was wondering um if you could give our listeners an idea of the social issues there um and the problems that social workers can actually address in burma yeah so we uh suffer from this military coup for you know, years, generationally. So that has the internet intergenerational trauma and speak due to the civil war. And uh, we get to taste the democracy for like five to uh, seven years. And that's changed a lot of people, mindset, education. The Gen Z had a lot of benefit out of that democracy. And when people are able to speak English, be able to go to school and starting to uh, use their critical thinking instead of just uh, living under the fear. Um, it has a lot of benefit. But on the other hand, now, within a year of the coup, we're starting to um, feel the fear again. Even when I'm talking, uh, do my talk shows or, you know, discussion about mental health, uh, you know, there's no way you can go around talking about and just in the society so i even have to be careful how i speak to the burmese community especially in the public now the fear has kicked in within even a year so um there's a lot of needs for social work there are handfuls of burmese students who came to the u.s to receive the formal education in social work fields so um you know these people who back receive the U.S. education and return back home to work in the Burmese community. Uh, the fundamental theory still works, but the framework, the resources, uh, how to function, and as even like following the uh, code of ethic uh, is very loose. So, you know, uh, especially there is no uh, association like NESW or rules of law to hold these um professionals accountable uh, for that. So, you know, basically uh, there's very handful of Burmese social workers and a tiny little bit of clinician who are qualified to help these uh, uh, Burmese people who are suffering, not only for the mental health, but also needs for the humanitarian aids, fundings for the programs to run efficiently. Uh, Burma doesn't 
uh, get the attention as we deserve. Uh, it could be because, you know, we are brown, we are Asian, we don't get that much attention like what happened in Ukraine. You know, Ukrainian is similar had things happening in both countries. But, uh, you know, when you have that white privilege, it's totally different uh serve and the services are different even the humanitarian aid we don't get that much at all like we're just swimming in the mud we're just fighting to restore the democracy back home in our own ways so uh especially when it's come to the social work which is kind of blind leading to blind so um basically what we need is more social workers to be educated we need to give more scholarship to burmese people who want to become social work uh, is you know and also uh, we need fundings to run for the programs so for example i am running um program for women a survivor who has uh, faced the sexual violence in conflict, but we do not have funding, but we just go ahead and do it because that's my passion to help burn the woman. And also uh, there are so many political prisoners, uh, young people who have lost their dreams and lives. And, you know, a lot of things that we could be helping, uh, but we don't get that, that much attention that we deserve. Join NASW's National Connect to End COVID-19 effort. It's a CDC-funded initiative to support social workers and their clients in informed vaccine decision-making. NASW is collaborating with its partner, the University of Texas at Austin Steve Hicks School of Social Work, to provide national webinars, chapter trainings, tools, and information that promote vaccine confidence among social workers and equip social workers to support clients in informed vaccine decision-making. Visit NASW's website to learn more. Oh, wow. Wow. So um, how do you um, communicate with social workers back home in Burma? Are there Zoom calls? Are you visiting? Um, In other words, I was wondering how you are building up coalitions with the people there. Oh, so for the security, we use Signal app. Signal app is very secure compared to like, messenger facebook messengers or viber or anything like that so that's how we stick in contact because uh in burma you can really use facebook like the way we use it it's kind of like in china so they have to use the other route to use the facebook uh the government is watching the military government is watching so with the social workers, we have groups that we chat in. Uh, I talk to the Burmese social worker back home, where are the struggles they're facing, where are the things that, uh, you know, we can work together, uh, especially, you know, when you become a social worker, even in the U.S., we can't just be a social worker. We can we become, you know, community leader, where we become humanitarian aid worker, whatever it may be, you might be wearing more than three hats at the same time even like advocate or, you know, politic, uh, politicians, whatever your role need to serve. So uh, for me as a social worker outside of the country, I try to provide um, financially or training, support, uh, con- you know, connecting with uh, right people for things that uh, could be beneficial for a social worker back home. Gotcha. So, um, I noticed that you have um, brought up the issue of uh, sexual violence a lot. And um, why is this issue so important to you, Juju? Uh, it is close to my heart when it's come to the, you know, women rights and reproductive health rights. Uh, whether I live in the U.S. or in Burma, uh, women, t- you know, we have faced these uh, oppressions throughout the history, through these decades. Uh, the, the nature of the oppression may change, but we still are still suffering from this oppressed society. So, you know, especially even you, in the U.S., we have more resources and it, the law tend to be, you know, protecting the, uh, the woman supposedly, but it's also changing. We're going backward. Uh, and then especially in the third world country like Burma, there's uh, there's no strong rules and laws to begin with. And then in fact, you know, just being a woman is uh, another 
vulnerable. Um, you know, there's layers and layers of oppression to uh, against the woman. For example, you know, um, the leaders from Burma, Aung San Suu Kyi, Nobel Peace winner, she is a strong woman figure and she has won election again and again and again because of her strong uh, leadership and because she's just being a woman, the men are threatened by her present. And because of these uh, men's feeling insecure, men feeling uh, losing their roles, uh, you know, it's become uh, their toxic masculinity have, um, have made an effect in the whole country to uh, take over the power by the power, uh, the false weapons, uh, you know, with this and just laws. So because we are not able to make sure and that's why I think mental health is so important for men as well, because, you know, we haven't created a society or make a space for men to feel vulnerable, being scared, being um, insecure, being angry. You know, that's why it's important for creating a safe space for both men and women and creating a society where we can live in harmony. And it sounds so uh, cliche to talk about it, but uh, this is so fundamental for both men and women to feel safe in our society. That's why I have this mental health page and organization called Juju Safe Space. That way I try to create the community where everybody feels safe. Thank you. So um, it's really been um, a pleasure um, having um, a conversation with you. Um, I met you at the um, NASW National Conference in uh, June at um, a session. Um, you were so um, enthusiastic um, and warm. So I'm so glad after going through a lot of scheduling because you're out in um, Hawaii and we're on the East Coast that we finally had um, a chance to have a conversation. So for a final question, I mean, I wanted to um, ask you, um, as far as Burma, what are your like hopes for the future of your country and how do you think social work might help Burma attain what you actually wish or want for it? So my main wish is to uh, return back home in Burma, uh, especially as the Burmese community, we're working together to restore democracy. And um, so in the main purpose and the, my main mission is to also be a force for mental health movement. Uh, so, you know, I, whether I live in the U.S., Hawaii, Burma, Thailand, whatever I may be there, uh, Burmese people all around the world. And, um, you know, mental health is so important. Now we pay a lot of attention in the U.S., in Burma, everywhere else. Uh, starting to mental health become trendy, very uh hot topic to talk about. And at the same time, we can't just talk about, we need to put actions and uh, resources and the force behind that. So, you know, uh, that's why I would like to get more support in mental health services for Burmese community, as well as even in the US, um, you know, I live in the US, I'm a US citizen. I also love this country. Whatever I may be, I will be a beneficiary for any community that I belong to. So, you know, especially for Burma, I'm learning so much from the US democracy. And that's our hopes and dream to restore democracy in Burma as well. Juju, men too, thank you so much for being our guest um, on Social Work Talks and you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. You have been listening to NASW Social Work Talks, a production of the National Association of Social Workers. We encourage you to visit NASW's website for more information about our efforts to enhance the professional growth and development of our members, to create and maintain professional standards, and to advance sound social policies. You can learn more at www.socialworkers.org. And don't forget to subscribe to NASW Social Work Talks wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next episode.